and the recording is on. Welcome, everybody. It's August 16th, 2022, and this is the bi-weekly Cloud Custodian community meeting. Thanks, everyone, for showing up today. I'll be your host, uh, George Castro. Some um, preliminaries before we get started. The show notes, which I'll be linking in the description if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I'm putting there in the chat. Feel free to add agenda items, or if you see any of the PRs that have opened in the past two weeks or something and you want to bring attention to it, uh, just let me know, or just you could just um, mentioning at the meeting when we uh, do for call for open agenda. Quick reminder that these uh, meetings are recorded and archived on YouTube, um, so we do have those. If you ever need any of the backlog, we do that. And then the notes of this we do publish to the mailing list and to the GitHub discussions area if you ever want to look uh, at any of these items for cross-reference purposes. Um, as always, we are CNCF. Uh, project so we will be under the code of conduct so please be excellent to each other um with that i'm going to share the agenda real quick and then we're going to um get started here how's everyone doing today okay all right all right here's what i got for the agenda so far we we've done intros um, anybody is their first meeting, uh, welcome. If you want to say hello, you can say hello, uh, but don't, uh, don't feel pressured to not say hello. Um, if you don't want to, so, um, feel free to say hi in chat, um, or in the matrix chat, um, some, uh, governance updates. I just wanted to put this, uh, on the radar again. We do have our draft governance.md, um, which is here in draft. I have not PR'd it yet. And I'm just basically taking feedback on how the governance of the project is looking. Um, so if you wanna check that out, I basically keep this linked uh, in the show notes at the top every time because it's kind of an ongoing process uh, and things like that. But it looks like we don't, um, uh, with Kapil isn't here, probably uh, worth skipping talking about this one uh, for today. Um, we're gonna do another gov governance as code day. Um, so we did this last year, it was a virtual event where we basically put together uh, an entire workshop of Cloud Custodian content workshops. We did a state of the project with like metrics and all that kind of stuff. And um, that that was uh, highly well attended. It is, uh, the recordings are available on the YouTube channel. Um, I'll make sure I, I put a link to that um, in, the, in the show notes, but uh, we wanna do it again this year. Uh, so the way it works is we have a page that you can click through um, where you can register uh, if you want to attend. However, um, specifically for this group, uh, we are uh, taking CFPs. So what we'd like for you to do, and uh, these uh, closes at the end of this month, so you've got about two weeks. Um, we would really, really love to have as many diverse talks from as many uh, people as possible from as many organizations. So. Um, Usually when we're having the meetings, it's like AJ and Jamison uh, and Sonny showing like some of their stuff. Uh, this time what we'd like to do is kind of flip it and see if we can get content from the people that are using Custodian. Um, it's a good day. Hope to give out t-shirts and all that kind of uh, fun stuff. This will also be a hybrid event. So uh, it will be virtual, but if you're in the Washington DC area, somewhere around there, uh, we haven't... We haven't finalized the venue yet, so no promises, but it will be in the uh, Washington DC area um, on the uh, 18th of October. That is the week before KubeCon and Cloud Native Con, so we uh, made, made sure we're not conflicting with that. Um, so if you're in the area or you your organization has an office in the area and you wanna send people, uh, we're hoping to do those um, high bandwidth uh, conversations. And of course, we'll make sure that all of the content is also available online. And if that is interesting to you from last year, if you, um, in this discussion link, uh, in the notes, I have the playlist of all of the talks that we did from last year. So uh, those are all available if you wanna spin yourself up and kind of see the content that we're looking for. If you talked last year, I'd like to encourage you to do it again. If you've never talked before, then I really want you to uh, submit a talk. And of course, uh, feel free to ask, if you want to partner up or if you want to, uh, if, if you worked on something really gnarly and want to share with the community something you've learned, um, all, uh, 
everything's on the table as far as custodian content. Anyone, any questions about governance as code day before I move on? All right, next is uh, the release 0.9.18 is out. Um, this is the first release that we did with Darren involved. Sonny and Darren, can you kind of give us a quick summary, or AJ's here now, of um, how we kind of got to this point as far as, um, I know we did a few prep meetings leading up to this yeah for me uh it was uh, an interesting experience got a lot of help from aj and sunny um there was uh you know good documentation with the checklist um and i was able to follow it i think there was some missing steps uh as we discover as we go along um but uh as we figure out those missing steps uh, we were able to crank through it um, um and hopefully the that documentation now should have all of the staff that is needed for whoever the next person that wants to, to do it yeah, uh, yeah just, uh, and uh, and i would say um the only other um hiccup that we ran into was uh uh has nothing to do with the the, the release uh process is more of um uh, when we um um freeze uh, the dependency we were picking up a new version of both of three, which uh, broke some of the unit tests. And so, you know, it's just additional hiccup that we ran into. Um, but yeah, hopefully the, all the, the steps that we have in the release checklist notes, uh, we should get the next person to uh, go through it uh, much easier. But, and one of the, the interesting that came up, <laughs> that keep on coming up though is, huh, maybe we should have uh, some kind of, uh, container um uh, on, on way to uh, do the release because as we find out oh one of the issue was my pip version was not I know, as up to date or the poetry was not up to date uh, <laughs> or maybe yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm running on mac versus running on on linux and things like that um so yeah no, i thought that was interesting uh aj was saying that yeah if ski was here <laughs> ski would be <laughs> saying that <laughs> that's it yeah, and if you're interested in that, I put the links of the uh, release checklist that we followed through uh, to make that happen. So um, things are working because Kapil was on holiday when we uh, when we released this. So uh, uh, we're, we're definitely making progress there as far as uh, spreading the work out evenly uh, between folks. So thanks everyone that got uh, that was involved in that, and hope you enjoy the release. Um, all right. Um, does anybody have uh, any anything that they'd like to discuss or bring forth of the community? Does anybody have anything burning on fire that uh, you know you have a policy that's broken? I know sometimes people like to show up and get uh, get direct help. So if if, uh, if that's you, if that's the reason you came to the meeting, please uh, say hello. Um, if not, what we usually do is uh, we have a script that we run that kind of shows us the activity of all the PRs and issues that are. Um, kind of happening over the past two weeks and we use that to kind of build our agenda and what we're going to talk about today um and then uh what i do is I, I start putting together the agenda and then anybody who wants can just add items that they'd like to discuss here um i don't know if kapil's going to show up but he wanted me to share this one he's looking for eyes on this one um has anyone talked to him about this one that can kind of summarize it for us or do you want me to take a stab right. at this this is the SQLite cash thing yeah so I, I think this has come up in previous meetings uh i think the most relevant i'm gonna need to find the uh, the issue but we did have someone who was trying to run c7n org across a large number of accounts and was oh there you go bam uh that that issue and the suspicion was that it was because we're just we're writing to a, just a giant cache file and holding a lot of stuff in memory and I know Kapil had been talking about moving over to SQLite for a good while anyway, and thinking that was going to ease up some of the memory pressure. So that one's kind of exciting. Should be uh, should be cool. I've started looking at it. I don't know if I, anyone else feel free to to jump on it too. Um, just I guess try it. That's the uh, that's the idea here. So we'll we'll try it. Make sure it works. It should be a good change. Mm. Do we do we know off offhand? What perf 
performance improvements we can see, or is it just one of those? Let's we don't. That's one of those things we gotta we gotta test. And, and I think to to really see it, we're gonna have to. I mean, we can try. Uh, we could try doing things like I don't know, running with a, a memory profile or, or just just profile a, a C seven N org run. It's going to help if you've got a lot of accounts and regions and you're running across uh, like like a large estate. Mm -hmm. uh, but so, so he wrote the code already. It just needs a. Yeah, he's uh, the code's in there. It's open. I don't know if it's totally ready uh, from his perspective yet. I only I started looking at it and then I. I got plenty of accounts to run against. I can. I mean, I'm 200 plus, but not 500. That's a lot. Yeah, ideally, Christian <laughs> would run it. <laughs> Christian would run it again, right? And then, oh yeah, I'd like to try. That's pretty maybe. Cool. Yeah, or maybe, yeah. or maybe you run you run it once, for everything. and then add the patch. Yeah. Um. Anyway, he just wanted to get some eyeballs on that, so check that out. Yeah. And yours next was AJ seventy six fifty. Um, oh, this was just a release. Oh yeah, um, and, and that was no, yeah. that, that was just just wanted to call you out on that one, George, because you got mm. the be, from seventeen to eighteen, uh, you got the permission sorted out. So just clicking the create discussion from release button works now, and all right, um, and so that's that's lovely. Um, I know we have talked in the past about trying to uh, to query some of our GitHub data over time, and, and mm -hmm. in these release discussions, we can just look at trends from one release to another who's contributing just yell out and say thanks to a bunch of folks so uh i think that stuff's going to be on the way and having these release discussions will be good for things that are i mean people have uh, comments or questions that are specifically related to release uh, release this is a release discussion so right if anyone has anything that's specific uh, we may uh, i know sunny put the note up at the top of the release notes about that get bucket location change and that we've already gotten some questions in gitter so I think some high-level concerns that are specifically related to a release, we can we can have here. So uh, I'm actually not sure where we're going to take discussions, release-level discussions, but that's it's just a good thing to have available. I like that it maps out the title to the to the thing. Yeah. That makes it a lot easier to see what exactly if something affects you as opposed to just the title. For um, sure. And then if you haven't seen before, in every release we always add the schema changes at the bottom. I've always thought that was cool. Um, oh, cool. People are already uh, asking questions. Oh, that's not a good you one. Know I, 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 I saw was, you talking I was about this. I thinking of one. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking of Michael when he, because he was posting in Gitter, and then that is exactly what I was thinking is that this would show up as a, uh, as a, on the discussion thread. So perfect. Gotcha. Way to, gotcha. way to use the tools that are available. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So anything else to talk about 0 0.9.18? All right, and to fill everybody in, we are in the process of trying to fully automate the release process. So uh, hopefully, not have to have put people through the pain uh, once a month. But uh, we're we're, uh, we're making progress every time we do it. So that's um, that's amazing to me. All hey, right, a big shout out to Darren for enduring that pain and making our release yes. checklist better. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, thank you. <laughs> well done. Yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. That was cool. We're going to look back and be like, once we automate this, we're going to look back at all the manual stuff that we had to do. And um, Steve, I wanted to call this one out, 7654. I, I, is this your first contribution to Custodian? My first PR. I'm trying all to right. process. Yeah, I figured I'll try it because there's a lot of docs I want to update. And I figured this one was good. <laughs> I don't that know. That is amazing. It's really good. It works. But, I'm not yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So I'm trying to find across all my accounts and, and orgs. Mm -hmm. Your uh, flow log is set to the right bucket, and I hit this error when I was trying to do that. So I don't know if my fix is very good, but it works. So awesome, awesome! And I did want to point out that I am in the process of trying to get admin access to our Easy CLA bot thing because I I saw that you had a few yeah I, it misfires was there with the error, right. I had to fill out that form, and then I had to take it away and redo the PR. Yeah. Um, it was kind of, but I, 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 it seems to me, everyone else knows how to do it. I just, <laughs> it, um, just trying to learn it. It's not your fault. There's uh there's workflow stuff to fix there. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm trying to get the, the admin access to make that easier, easier for us. So, um, all right, moving on. Someone, uh, banged, uh, 7652. This is add Lambda handler as a parameter. 
did we want to talk about this one? Um, yeah, I think I wanted to chat if ah, okay. Gil was here. Uh, it looks like he's not today. Um, I don't know. It's, I guess my question would be the, it seems like the use cases um, integrating with the Datadog uh, entry point, um, which case I don't really know if we need to expose this as a as a parameter as opposed to just contributing an upstream um maybe environment variable flag to set it because otherwise it's I don't know, it just basically opens up the um the ability to do a whole bunch of crazy stuff that i don't know if, as a community we want to necessarily do support for um like if you set a custom handler and you come in asking for help i'm like i i mean that's <laughs> that's sort of your own customization. I don't know like what you expect us to do for you. Um, but yeah, mostly we just wanted to hear if uh, what Kapil had to, uh, was thinking about this. But if he's not here, we can go ahead and skip it. Yeah, unless anyone else has opinions on this one. All right, we will table this. Uh, I don't think tables in a mode you do you? tabling. Uh, I guess not. All right, seventy six fifty one is uh, next on the list. This was merged end time roundup one unit to include now. Yeah, what was this? Yeah, that's a nice. Yeah, that, that's a, a nice little tweak. So in in the last release, we had a bit of a fix to the metric filter that was losing data if you were looking back at a uh looking far back into the past beyond two months or so you would potentially lose data and not be able to see uh the full this would come up if someone was trying to look at 90 days or a year worth of activity and just mm -hmm. see uh, uh typically checking for long unused resources uh so we had a fix for that but it was looking at it uh so i was looking rolling back the end period so that it would stop like the it if it's say a eleven fifteen, it might have to back up to an even uh, even five minute block or an even hour, even minute. Uh, and then Ken said, like, "Hey, I see what you're doing, but let's just move this ahead into a fictitious future uh, that's that's just a little bit ahead of time, so that we make sure we catch those those last bits of metrics that are that that just happened." Uh, mm. So this is this avoids missing some subtle subtle current metrics. Like, so with the uh, the previous release, you might lose a, 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 a less than a second worth of data for for current stuff. Or if you were looking back at a year, you might lose, uh, in the worst case, like a, a up to an hour worth of data. Um, so so this is nice. Uh, mm -hmm. And just thanks to him, good catch, good call. Cool. Thanks, Kent from Sydney. Amazing. All right, next we have 7636. I don't know if I don't uh, I don't know if you want to talk about this again or uh no, I I think the main it, the main call out here was just because so Darren mentioned earlier there was a, that we found uh, during our release calls we found some missing steps. And one of the steps that we found that was missing was when we were kind of preparing for a release, we go through a whole dependency update. We just look at all the dependencies we have, try to bump them up, catch any any new patch versions. And usually as part of that, we also increment the package versions that, that we have. So we bump our custodian 0917 to 0918 and, and all the all the related projects. And that was just kind of a silent step that was documented in another file. So it was not in the release checklist mm. um, because initially the release checklist was coming in, assuming that all that work was already done. So part of talking through these things in public and stumbling around together is that we we find those hidden things that we assumed were happening and we document them. So uh, thanks again, Darren, Steve, everyone who's on these on these calls for uh, for figuring those things out. We can't automate them if they're not documented in the first place. So. <laughs> True that. Um, all right, and those PRs. Uh, there's other PRs here. Is any anybody have anyone that jumps out of you? I've got a few issues to discuss with everybody. I 
feel like the list of open PRs in two weeks keeps getting longer. And the closed one is just as long. So um, it'll be interesting when we actually like go and measure our velocity, um, which I hope to give a talk about at Governance as Code Day. All right. Um, this was an interesting one. Uh, Clock Custodian not able to find our policy file in the container. Was this um, was this a bind mounting issue, like a volume mounting issue, or was it? Not sure yet, to me. I, I'm really curious okay. to see what we what we hear back about this one. I mean, I, I and I would be curious. Anyone on the call who happens to run Custodian through Docker, I'd be curious to see if anyone else is hitting issues. Um, I'm really not sure what would cause the previous release to work fine and the current release to fail because it can't find uh, on something related to a bind mount. I just uh, super curious because I don't know. Yeah. And uh, Kapil mentioned that there, that our containers are based on 2204 now instead of 2004. Um, yeah. Yeah, but if anybody has a, has particular experience running custodian through Docker or any troubleshooting ideas that aren't covered in there, yeah, uh, you know, fire away. F I figured it was worth getting getting some eyeballs in it, see if anyone's run into that. Um, this one is 7587. Yep, that was me, ah, George. Yes. Awesome. I, I know we talked about lake formation in the past, but we, we got a chance to do a deep dive dive with AWS on this, and we figured um, the only way to kind of keep a check on uh, whether a user is capable of exfiltrating data or not is via the IAM rule. So I was kind of curious if it would make sense to add a lake formation registered location resource type and uh, make sure that the rules are not like service link rules because apparently you cannot like lo lock down the service link rules to org ID, but they do have the capability to lock down custom rules to org ID. So if, if you lock down your roles, you won't have the capability to read or write into non-org ID resources. So Sunny, AJ, any thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I don't have any. I, I saw your response and I thought, oh, that seems, seems a little weird to me that there's not another way to kind of lock that down. That was the only thought that I had. I thought like, wow, that, that seems like, like it's kind of an, <laughs> Exfiltration as a service. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And that was just that was talking to like your own your own TAMs or, or professional services or something to look for any ideas. Yeah, they they kind of uh, engaged the service team uh, to mm. talk with us, and the service team said. Yeah, they're aware of this issue that there's no way to like kind of figure out if the bucket is owned by you or not. But the yeah, IAM also, role. Yeah, we also talked to goal. Becky Weiss on the IAM team. Yeah, I mean, they weren't they weren't playing. They're were bringing the big guns, and we still have got almost nowhere other than yeah, you can do this this special way. Don't do mm -hmm. what we told you to do. Do it different. Basically, is what we heard. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, that's. I mean, thanks. Thanks for looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Uh, yeah, I can uh, table up a PR for this if you guys agree with adding a new resource. Yeah, maybe talk on Gitter and then potentially take it from there. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll put this on Kapil's radar. All right, thank you. All right, anything else on this one? Thanks for digging that down. Nope, that's that's all from me. All right, and a few issues closed. That is the um, that is the agenda. Does anybody have anything else uh, they'd like to add, or any specific issues they were having, or issues? Everyone's like, "End of summer, let's go home." All right. Well, um, thanks everyone for coming. We appreciate it. I've got to, I've got a few items here. I will follow up. And uh, do please consider submitting CFPs. It would be great, especially if if you can make it to Washington D.C. Um, for us to hang out. I, I know uh, I joined the project in the middle of the pandemic, and it's been difficult to actually to get to know each other outside of that little video in the corner. So, um, George, there's a question on in chat. Ooh, yeah. Uh, 
Athik, I hope I got that right. Uh, a general question. I'm thinking of creating a dashboard to have details about policies and different accounts in one place. Any advice or article slash documentation that you can refer to? Um, yeah, there's, I don't know about specific documentation, but a lot of people rely on CloudWatch uh, dashboards um, as well as the CloudWatch metrics. So if you run a custodian policy with the dash M uh, flag, um, that will output metrics into your, uh, into CloudWatch. Uh, so it includes stuff like resource count, um, any failures, uh, and it'll add additional dimensions by accounts, regions, policy names, et cetera. Um, yeah, monitoring your environment, I think. Um, and then you can- uh, Dash, dash metrics, there it is. Yeah. That's the, yeah. And then you can put that into a uh, CloudWatch dashboard. That's how most people do it. Okay. I'll post that link in chat there if y'all want to see it. On uh, on that note, uh, we don't use that because we 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 tend to run everything right in and across all of these different accounts. So we run Custodian via uh, Code Build, and so then we basically shunt all of our Custodian logs. Uh, over to Sumo Logic, and then build um, dashboards based on all the logs coming in, like the raw logs that are coming in, um, just straight from each of our our runs. It's kind of a very manual process in that sense, but it's another alternative way of handling this kind of scenario. Anybody else doing uh, a Keith had a blog post on this. Uh, let me make sure I put that in the notes as well. All right. Anything else while your host frantically pastes? URLs into the notes. Who, who's the container person um, in Docker Hub? Uh, the reason I, I just started, I just pulled the pulled the container and realized there's no ARM sixty <laughs> four. You know that is a great reminder. Hey, Sonny, can you give us a quick TLDR on ARM support for the the container? <laughs> sure. Um, actually, if, if you are on ARM right now, uh, if you don't mind testing the ARM image that um, I'm building, yeah, uh, there's the I just put it in the chat that's that's the Docker image. Um, I'm working on automating the uh, building of the image uh, from moving from our custom tooling to uh, the GitHub Actions build X stuff. So if you yeah. do a Docker pull from there, um, all, all four of the existing images are there. Um, and then if you want to take a look at how they're being built, they're on my, uh, there's a pull request on my fork. Um, this will eventually be a pull request onto, um, uh, onto the upstream, but I'm just, you know, I, I don't want to, uh, build the the image with the uh c7n build docker hub credentials so um so you're using build x you're not yeah we're using build x uh briefly looked at doing like a manual like manifest building and basically came to the conclusion that it's like way too much work to just <laughs> just do build x instead um especially since build x just does all, all that stuff for you so right right um yeah, there's there's a few things left on that. Uh, so the images are building, um, hitting a few test issues, uh, not specifically on like um, running the container. There's just like for some reason unable to uh, like when you run like Docker images for some reason the image itself doesn't show up, but you can run the image. I don't know what's going on, but um, a few paper cuts like that trying to figure that out. Yeah. Um, 
and then yeah hopefully have a pr up uh, against the upstream um later on this week oh cool yeah no i was gonna i, I was look i just read that issue where the guy was couldn't read his file and i've had that problem on different docker docker binary like uh docker on mac for some reason can't read the home directory something to do with the file system so i'm thinking maybe he just has some weird problem with that. I'll try it. I'll try. I'll get on the X86 and try it too. Cool. And did you know Sonny was working on the ARM containers? No, was that random? I just tried to pull the one. Yeah, everyone kind of already done it. I was like, some people, you know, some some of the there. I know Amazon went 2022s on there. Yeah, kind of like a plan, right? The next thing after that would be doing some six door signing of the images and stuff. So. That's all. Cool. That's all coming up in the future. Sunny, would that also open up possibility for custodian Lambda running on ARM, like a setting on the Lambda itself and the policy or something? Um, I think right now, uh, that would be a separate PR. Um, I talked to Kapil briefly about that uh it we basically need to like check what architecture you're running and then make sure we're out we're uploading the the proper um you know additional libraries that we upload um <laughs> so that would be a separate pr but uh i know that there was he did a investigation into like lambda layers before um and potentially distributing that I don't know if we're going to go that route, um, but it's yeah, it's it would be a, a separate line of work. Okay, got it. Are you are you running on ARM right now, Pratush? Yeah, we are kind of uh, like we are kind of trying to build our uh, container and trying to see if that's a feasible thing on our yeah. end. But we are also kind of trying to figure out if the lambdas would would, would work without like having custom packages in the policy gotcha all my jobs are arm and ecs on so fargate so um i just built my own container but uh um, oh, gotcha. not much about i didn't know lambda was here <laughs> mm. yeah yeah it runs fine on lambda state no ecs and fargate okay, mm. okay. got it mm. i don't i didn't know there was a difference in lambda I don't work with Lambda that much. All right, cool. Anything else? All right, and uh, I've taken a note. As, as, as soon as Sunny uh, pushes and it's uh, ready for consumption, I'll send an out of band update so you uh, so you you'll have it in your inbox right away when it's ready. If you're not, if you're not following his fork. Yeah, that, well, that's one thing. Maybe we should, uh, you know. Um communicating with you guys this is, I, I i know i know to, i know i shouldn't expect like right away responses but sometimes i'm on gitter sometimes i'm on linkedin sometimes on google I mean, it's not just you guys it's everybody i i, I don't yeah. know if we i can't stand gitter so here's i i i feel you here here's a quick here's a quick survey because i know every time i ask people also have this blocked at work would an actual real slack channel of custodian be useful for you like if we had custodian.slack.com or whatever because i know in the past people worked at organizations that they couldn't use slack paul yeah. paul says yes in all caps <laughs> yeah i would like slack i mean i we use we don't use slack in my company we use teams but I'll, I'll right right so yeah we got blocked on Twitter, so it's hard you got blocked on Twitter? yeah the company like blocked Twitter all together so okay all right yeah, yeah, because but when I can I help with. Yeah, go, go ahead, ahead, Josh. Sorry. Oh, no, you go ahead. No. No, I was just saying I can help with uh, testing of Sunny's Docker image when, once it's ready. Um, so, yeah. Right. Because I feel when we're on Slack, Kapil was like, man, we can have a bot that showed you all the incoming PRs, and then yeah. we can have all the business, and we could do all, we could do all that stuff. And I'd be happy to set all that up. Uh, and I, I know how to do that. It's just in the past when I asked, people were like, Slack at work, you know, Gitter's like my only option. So I know people had reservations around that. But if people want to 
give Slack a real actual go. I am so down. Slack completely? No. Well, I think we would have to keep the Gitter open for certain people. Uh, yeah. we'd, ha we'd have to try it, right? And then figure out, okay, do we need to... You know, that, that kind of opens a whole bunch of worms. I think we could see... We could uh, try out Slack for a bit before, you know... I, I'm, I'm very that? hesitant of, you know, hey, in three months, we're going to shut this thing down and move to this thing. Um, so. How many of you all are on either the CNCF Slack or the FinOps Slack? Just a. I think I'm on the foot of Slack, but I haven't been on in a million years. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing probably not from anyone else. All right. Yeah. Because they, there are 2,700 people in the custodian channel on the FinOps Slack. The problem with that is um, you have to apply, you know, and there's like a review process. Like you can't just join it. Um, which might be a problem for some people. Oh, FinOps, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's a CNCF oh, Slack, yeah. which exists. But... Uh, and they'll let you in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So good feedback. I'll, 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 I'll put some thought into that, and then we might kick the tires on something. All right. Anything else going once? Point twice. Have your 21 minutes back. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see everybody in two weeks. Don't forget, CFPs close at the end of this month. And if I'm coming after you, it means you haven't submitted enough. So hopefully find something cool to submit. All right. Cheers, everyone. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thanks, all. Thank you.